Hi, this is a tutorial video on how to interpret the birth chart using vibrational astrology. I've already made lots of videos on vibrational astrology, including how to do quick readings in vibrational astrology, but I wanted to make this one with that has no assumptions to start at the very, very beginning of how to interpret a chart, assuming you haven't looked into vibrational astrology at all yet. Okay, so let's learn how we do this. First thing, before I give you these steps for interpreting a chart using vibrational astrology, is what is vibrational astrology? It's a modern system of astrology. It incorporates ideas from many other systems of astrology, like harmonic astrology, cosmobiology, modern psychological astrology, Vedic astrology. So it's a, a relatively new system of astrology that's built upon many other ideas. That's all we need to know for now. I want to dig into how we interpret the chart. The first step, the very first thing we do to interpret the chart is we find a particular symmetrical pattern. It's, a, it's a, a pattern where one planet is in between two others. The second thing we're going to do after we find it is to interpret it. So here's the birth chart of Vincent van Gogh, the famous artist. His birth time is from a birth certificate, but it's rounded off to the hour. It's 11 a.m., so maybe it's off by a little bit or maybe he was born exactly in the hour, but it is from a birth certificate, so it's, it's fairly accurate. Now, in modern Western astrology, we would usually go to the rising sign, look at the ruler, look at the sun sign, moon sign, what kind of emphasis there, are, there is, you know, stelliums and so on. And in Vedic astrology, we would also put a lot of emphasis on the ascendant called the lagna and the ruler of it and so on. But in vibrational astrology, we look for these vibrational patterns. And the first one that we're going to look at is shown here where the Sun at 9 degrees Aries is halfway in between Uranus and Neptune. So the Sun is conjunct the Uranus-Neptune midpoint. So if a planet is conjunct that midpoint, midpoint of course means the point halfway in between, or if it's opposition, if the sun was at 9 degrees Libra instead of 9 degrees Aries, it would be opposition that midpoint, and it would still have an angle of sun to Uranus equal the angle from sun to Neptune. So it's a resonance, just like two strings that are the same length at the same vibration. So the sun Uranus is vibrating at, you might say, the same frequency as the sun Neptune, and it makes sun Uranus Neptune a, a resonant system and it's very exact it's a nine minute orb so in other words sun is conjunct the uranus neptune midpoint with a nine minute orb almost exact and of course the smaller the orb in other words the closer the planet is to that exact midpoint the more powerful it is and in vibrational astrology we put a huge emphasis on orbs if an orb for a midpoint structure, we call this, it's called a midpoint structure, a planet conjunct or opposition, the midpoint of two other planets. If that orb is under 15 minutes, it's so powerful. You can just read it off the chart. You can just tell the person, regardless of the signs or houses or anything else, it's that powerful. If it's under a half a degree, it's still very strong. Under a degree, it's solid. Over a degree, it's getting weaker. These are the orbs we use in vibrational astrology. There are other systems of astrology where they use midpoints and so on, and the rules can be slightly different. Now, Van Gogh has something amazing. Not only is the Sun conjunct the Uranus-Neptune midpoint, but Mars is conjunct the Sun-Neptune midpoint. You see that? It's, it's really extraordinary because he has one planet at the midpoint of two others, then you take one of those sides, the Sun-Neptune side of this midpoint structure, and there's a planet conjunct that midpoint. And it also has a small orb. Mars is conjunct the Sun-Neptune midpoint with an 11-minute orb. So here on the right side, we have what are called tree, a tree diagram. The Sun is conjunct the Uranus-Neptune midpoint. The planet at the top is the focal planet, the planet in the middle. And these are the planets making the midpoint. Sun is conjunct. There's a conjunct symbol there. The Uranus-Neptune midpoint, nine minutes. It's also conjunct another midpoint. We're not going to discuss that here with a larger orb. And then Mars is conjunct the Sun-Neptune midpoint, 11-minute orb. 
This is an incredibly powerful pattern because number one, the orbs are small, and number two, there are two midpoint structures made from these four planets. So think of it as vibration, as resonance, all these things at the same frequency. The, the Sun-Uranus angle is twice the length of the Sun-Mars angle. In music, that would be up one octave. So this is, you don't have to worry about this octave stuff, but just take my word for it. It's a resonating system. And this will describe the energy flow of the person. Okay, so the first thing we do is we identify if there are any strong midpoint structures, meaning with small orbs, and I'm using Van Gogh because he's an extreme example of two very exact midpoint structures formed by just four planets, a resonating system. So, to review, first we identify the symmetrical patterns, and you would do that with computer software. You find these midpoint structures using computer software. I'm not going to go into the software in this video. What I want to concentrate on this video is how the interpretation is done. Now, the next thing we do is we, of course, we interpret it. Now, we found it. What does it mean? Now, in vibrational astrology, you can use extremely simple meanings for the planets. For sun, clear and present conscious reality. The moon is memories, moods, and disposition. It's or history. It's literally the past reflected into the present as our memories and our moods, our disposition is something that develops over long periods of time. Mercury connects and associates ideas. Venus is attraction to beauty. Now you may say that Venus is art or Venus is this or that. Um, in VA, short for vibrational astrology, we can use these extremely simple meanings to get right to the heart of what something means. It's really beautiful because we can go right to it without a lot of guessing. And Mars is this force to do something, to get something done, to achieve something. Jupiter expands. It makes things bigger. Saturn goes to the essence. It finds what's essential. It removes what's superfluous. So sometimes we think of Saturn as a taskmaster or as inhibition or restriction. In VA, we're going to say that Saturn just goes to the bones. It goes to the essence. It gets rid of anything superficial. And Uranus is spontaneous, improvis improvisational, lively, free. It's this lively, free, spontaneous energy, and it has an electrically vibrant feeling to it. Neptune is idealistic, motivated by a dream or a vision. And Pluto is compulsive or obsessive. So to do the interpretation, you can just stick the words together. For the Sun, conjunct the Uranus-Neptune midpoint, sometimes we use the equals here, means conjunct or opposition is, is what it means in the context of vibrational astrology. So if Sun equals Uranus-Neptune, we can just say Sun, a clear and present, right, a clear and present conscious reality, a clear and present, freely spontaneous Uranus, idealism, Neptune. So you can just stick it together and get to the heart of what this means. Mars equals Sun, Neptune, do something and achieve something that is clear, present, and idealistic. This will give you the, an idea. Now it's a little abstract, but with practice and experience, you get a more intuitive feeling about what it means. And Uranus, Neptune, is wildly inspired. You know, here in when we just translate it, it says freely spontaneous idealism. Well, it's it's visionary, it's psychic, it's and to have the sun there, your queer and present who you are, what you are and in real life at this moment is Uranus Neptune, very prone to use drugs or go into some kind of reverie to be highly psychic or a highly inspired state of mind. Now, the Mars at Sun Neptune, uh, as we said, here's the direct translation of it, but as you get the feeling for this, Mars, this need to achieve, it means someone driven by a vision, dream, or ideal. Can you feel that? Energy of Mars is connected to Neptune, and you don't have to go to just associations. Like some people say, Oh, it means you can't achieve a lot. You're going to become sick or you're going to become ill. Those are possibilities. But in vibrational astrology, 
we think about it as an energy flow, what's underneath all of those symptoms of the behavior is a drive to do something idealistic. It means the person cannot live a plain and ordinary life. They have a strong need for a sense of magic and awe in what they do. Mars, Neptune, and Sun, this is what really is happening. Not just think about it, not just feel it. Not, it's a real present reality that you, your life needs to be achieving a dream. So we have Van Gogh and it's saying he's inspired out of this world, visionary, he's got to achieve his dream. What have we done? We just described Vincent Van Gogh. This is what he's famous for, the wildly inspi inspired artist. He's the most extreme example. When we think of the mad artist, kind of like an archetypal image, we think of Van Gogh. And there it is in the midpoints. The trick, <clears throat> there's several tricks to this. One is you need to know to look for these direct midpoint structures. Number two, you have to use these simple meanings of the planets and what those planets are doing, their forces. And, and then with experience, you get the feeling for it and you describe exactly what's going on. So we've dis we have just identified the essential characteristics of Van Gogh. And what I'm claiming is that VA targets right into what's essential and fundamental about the person. So we don't need a quote because uh, we all know this, but just to quote from this website, vincentvangogh.org, perhaps the most famous artist in the world, Vincent Van Gogh, 1853 to 1890 is perceived as many by many as the mad artist, the man who painted in a frenzy, etc. That's a quote from the website. Of course, I'm just repeating the introductory statement about him on a website dedicated to Vincent Van Gogh. And his strongest pattern is who he is and what his need is and what his passion is and what his drive is, what his energy flow is. So this is why we're so excited about vibrational astrology, because it targets right into the essential thing about how the person is constructed, you might say, how, how they function. Okay, now the third thing about vibrational astrology is we divide the sky into other divisions other than 12. In the lower right corner, I show the major aspects that are common in modern Western astrology and Western astrology in general, also through, throughout the Middle Ages. Uh, so you have the conjunction, like if two planets are on the left side or anywhere in the wheel, we call that conjunct. If one is here on the left and one's at the bottom or the top, they're 90 degrees apart, we have a square. So we have a conjunction, a square, the opposition. We have the sextile, 60 degrees, the trine, 120. Some people also use the semi-sextile and the quincunx. 30 and 150, and some people now also use the sesquiquadrat, it's sometimes called, which is between the square and the opposition, and some people now use a semi-square, which is halfway between the conjunction and square. Those are the aspects that are, are generally used. But in vibrational astrology, we believe we can divide the circle by 5, not just by 12, by 7, by 9. Those are the three I show here. We can divide by 11. We can divide by 13. There are all of these. They're like frequencies. They're vibrations. And if planets are one-seventh apart or two-sevenths or three-sevenths, it, it connects them in a certain frequency. Seven tends to be introverted, to be still. Nine tends to be, uh, how can I say, it's, it it creates a sense of community, of connectedness, of wholeness. Five is more fluid and organic, tends to be creative and playful. So there are different frequencies creating different vibrations. And this is the breakthrough of the information age with these huge databases, with computers that calculate instantaneously what would take weeks in the past, with the internet to share information. In this huge information age, we have now made breakthroughs in astrology to a new level, and it builds upon the knowledge and wisdom of, of all of the ancient astrologers as well. Now, I just gave you some idea of what some of these vibrations mean, like five vibe over here, not rigid and linear, creative flowing, seven vibe, stillness. From this stillness comes a sense of mystery, 
hidden worlds, depth, mastery, discipline. So these are the meanings of different vibrations. I mentioned nine, wholeness, healing, integration, togetherness, connectedness, community. So here are the meanings. I'll mention them just quickly because in this video, I want to give you the idea of how we do the interpretation. We're not going to become masters of vibrational astrology in a half hour, but we can learn the concepts and how it's done and why it's done and, and, and how to proceed. So we, the conjunction, the planets work as one. Opposition, the planets are polarized. So I like to say a conjunction plays golf and opposition prefers tennis because tennis, there you have a, an opponent on the other side of the net. So it's a me and you. Golf, you might be playing against somebody in a sense, trying to get a better score, but it's more of a solo game. Trine is a smooth flow of energy. We already know that. Square is challenging, something you want to achieve. Uh, I already described five, six, the sextile is also a smooth aspect. What's not often recognized is that it's smooth with others. Sextile likes to share more than the trine. And it's, it has to do with the fact that six equals three times two. Um, eight is similar to four, it's action oriented. 10 is five times two, so it's creativity with others. 11 is very unstable, dynamic, restless, hungry. Uh, 12 is a basic asset. Uh, let me go on to 13, feeling exceptional or entitled, striving to be above the mediocrity. 14 is seven times two, mastering something with others. 15 is five times three, a smooth creative flow. 16 is similar to four, but it's more inner. It affects our talents and inner issues. Um, it's not obvious in the person's appearance. It's an internal thing. 17 is empathy, interest in the stories of others. And we can go on and on, but this, these are the most fundamental vibrations. Now that we have that understanding of how we think about planets and these vibrations, we're ready for our third step in the interpretation. The third step is we want to look at this angular distance of Sun to Uranus and the distance from Sun to Neptune because the angle is almost identical. That sun is almost exactly at the midpoint of Uranus-Neptune. These angles are the same. What vibration are they? Because that vibration will affect the nature, the quality of this midpoint structure, and it's one thirteenth of a circle. In other words, the distance of the sun to Uranus is one thirteenth of a circle. Now, I don't know how many degrees that is, and I don't really care. The computer's going to figure all this out. It's one thirteenth of a circle. It's on a 13 vibe. And what did I just say 13 vibe is? Let's go back to the previous slide. Here it is, feeling exceptional, striving to be above mediocrity. So this sun at Uranus-Neptune, this visionary, wildly inspired, like crazy kind of inspiration just out of this world is trying to rise above mediocrity to transcend limitations. And there is Van Gogh, the quote, mad unquote artist, trying to capture the flow of life on canvas, staring into the sun, trying to move beyond normal existence. We're describing Van Gogh even more precisely. Uh, it's just amazing. And the Mars in between Sun Neptune is one half of 113. It's 126. And the meaning of 26 is 13 times 2. So he's trying to bring that out and share it and communicate with others this vision that he has. It's all very strong 13 vib vibration energy. It's Van Gogh. The mad artist trying to lift himself out of the material world. It's just so exciting how these patterns work consistently. And I'm just using Van Gogh as an example to show you the procedure. Um, but it works with any chart. Now, um, one more thing to tell you about is there's something called a harmonic chart. And I've discussed it in other videos, but let me just discuss it here again. The harmonic chart reveals details about a vibration. So 
I like to call them vibrational charts. I really don't like this word harmonic because it's kind of indirectly related to what we're talking about. What we're talking about are vibrations. So we can call this 13th harmonic chart a 13 vibe chart, a 13 vibration chart. So you can do a harmonic chart or a vibrational chart, whatever you want to call it, for any harmonic, for any vibration. This is the one for the 13 vibration. And what the vibrational chart does is it will make planets in that vibration conjunct. So there's the Uranus, Sun, and Neptune conjunct. And the Sun and Neptune opposition Mars, that's the 26 vibration, 13 times 2. So it gives you a visualization of the 13 vibration aspects and the 13 times 2. Now this is really unbelievable. Not only does Van Gogh have the Sun at Uranus Neptune, that's enough to make you a little wild right there, and then the Mars conjunct Sun Neptune, he's got to achieve something with it, and then 13, he's got to do something transcendent with it, and all of this with very tiny orbs, but then you look at his 13 vibration chart, and Pluto square the whole thing. So here's Pluto making squares, and the squares in a, in a vibrational chart mean the same thing they do in a natal chart. They're not bad. They're, they're not blockages. They are forces. They're challenges. They're driving. So Pluto, we go, if we go back to our list of words for Pluto, let me go back to it. Because you don't have to dig around for fancy interpretations. Just compulsive or obsessive. If you keep your interpretation simple and don't complicate it and don't go off into a million different things, you'll get right to the heart of what it means. So now, let me get back to his chart the 13 vibration chart, Pluto's making the whole thing <laughs> compulsive and obsessive, which of course is what Van Gogh is. I'm, I'm laughing because it's so descriptive of Van Gogh and you can hardly make a chart more extreme. So it's just unbelievable how extreme this is and therefore how extreme Van Gogh is. It's just describing it. The beautiful thing about vibrational astrology is you see these energetic systems all unique. Each one is like a, like looking at a kaleidoscope or snowflakes with their own unique energy flow and patterns. It, it's just so beautiful the way you can go into it. Um, okay, and then the last step in the interpretation is we look at the eighth harmonic chart. I'll call it harmonic chart. That's a more common term for it, although I like to call it vibrational chart. Um, we look at the eighth harmonic chart, the fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. And we've already looked at the 13th uh, in the case of Van Gogh because when we looked at the midpoint structures, it told us that 13 was, would be important. But we also want to look at 8, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And, and there are other vibrations, but this is the fundamental things that we look at in vibrational astrology. And if we look at these, by the way, here's Van Gogh's 11 vibration. Do you remember what I said about 11? 11 is unstable. Another, you know, we think of Van Gogh not only trying to be transcendent, but unstable. Sure enough, as we expect, a huge planetary pattern in the 11 vibration. Uh, Mercury, the Sun, Uranus, Neptune uh, is also sextiles and trines in the 11 vibration. And it's part of what we call a kite pattern. There's a Mercury, Uranus, Neptune, Grand Trine, Sun over here. <clears throat> excuse me, making these sextiles and trines. Now, so that's Van Gogh. I mean, he's unstable, he's he's on fire. But let me just tell you one more thing, and we're done with this video. Okay, let's take a deep breath and think about this. In this 11th harmonic chart, it tells us that Sun is sextile Uranus, sextile Neptune, and Uranus and Neptune are trine. If we go back, to the 13 vibration chart, it tells us that Sun, Uranus, and Neptune are all conjunct within a 10 degree orb in the 13 vibration. So how can Sun, Uranus, and Neptune be conjunct in 13 and, let me go to the 11, and sextile, making sextiles and trines in the 11? How can it be both? Well, let me show you how that happens. Think of these aspects as 
the top of a wave. So this could be, for example, a low vibration, maybe five or seven. And when the planets are fifths or sevenths or ninths of a circle, and they're almost exact, we have an orb, they're very close to being exactly that distance, then they are in that vibration. Now imagine a, a, a slower, actually, oh no, this I'd set that backwards. This blue one would be the high vibration. So this could be the 66th. Let me show you what I mean. I'll go back here. A sextile in the 11 vibration chart, which is what this is, is an 11 times 6 vibration. So it's in a 66 vibration because you can take the aspect, multiply it by the chart, and you get the vibration. Well, we're getting a little bit advanced, but the, the simple point I want to make is this. Imagine this is 66 vibration, and imagine this is 13 vibration. Actually, it would be even more extreme. These would, there would be, you know, many, many of these waves for each one of these. And you can see that periodically they will overlap. So a low vibration, like this one, and a, and a high vibration, like this one, can periodically overlap. I don't see that any of these exactly overlap. This one, this peak here gets close to this one. This one gets close to this one. But you can imagine that if we do this long enough, sooner or later they overlap. And here's another image to help you understand this. What I've done here is I've put a purple line where the sun is. And I'm showing the points that are 13. Sun is purple to this purple line is 1 13th. So going to the left, that's what is that, counterclockwise from the sun, Uranus is 1 13th, that purple line. This would be 2 13ths, no planet there, 3 13ths, 4, 5, 6 13ths, and also going 6 13ths the opposite direction. If I go to the right, 1 13th, there's Neptune. And 2 thirteenths, 3, 4, 5, and 6 thirteenths in both directions. Those are the thirteenths. Now, in thinner green lines, I've put 66. Okay, so the sun, from the sun to this first green line to the right of it is 1 66. This one's 2, 3, 4, 5 66 right here, and I've labeled it, overlaps the 1 13th. So, you know, it's really common sense is that if I have, you know, a lot of little lines going around, all these little green lines, then they might overlap. And the orb is smaller for the higher vibration. That's why I drew it thin. So they can overlap. And we get, there's something incredible that happens from this. We get these special points in the zodiac, this special distance of Sun to Uranus and Sun to Neptune has a 13 quality and an 11 times 6 quality. It's very vibrant, very transcendental, very unique quality to that particular angle if the planets are exactly the right distance. And for Van Gogh, it's perfect and it describes why he is so unique, and why he is the way he is. Well, anyway, I've got actually gotten a little bit advanced in this video. This is supposed to be an introductory video, but I've shown you how these vibrations work um, in a chart and how you see them. I don't know if you hear that. My, I've got my uh, window open and neighbor's dog just started barking. I don't know if you hear that or not. Anyway, um, I'm at the end, fortunately. Um, okay, so... That's an introduction to interpretation using vibrational astrology. So concluding comments, vibrational astrology is a new and exciting development in astrology. It builds upon the ancient wisdom in astrology. It integrates information from the ancient wisdom as well as modern science. If you watch the other videos, you'll learn more about that. It shows the promise of a technology that is simultaneously scientific and spiritual, can help people live ha healthier, happier, and more productive lives. Uh, resources, there, you know, you may know I have hundreds of YouTube videos, dozens of them on vibrational astrology, and and many dozens on other topics. There are articles, books, there are classes. Um, there's an annual conference in early April in Gainesville, Florida, which is in North Florida. 
And I'm one of the, just to let you know a little bit about me, I'm one of the developers of the Kepler astrology software and the Sirius astrology software. Now, of course, that's what I use, um, and, and that's the software I use to find these things. And in other videos, we go into more detail and show how you use the software to find those things. Okay, that's my last slide. So there's an introduction to interpretation with vibrational astrology where the emphasis is finding these resonances and frequencies and how they create the vibrations, the wavelengths that, you, that a person is on and the motivation and direction for their lives. Okay, I hope that was helpful, my friends. God bless. Namaste.